you've had a chance to digest what happened in L.A., uh, obviously, and you talked about playing your best basketball and that. Can you just kind of talk big picture now that you're home to finish out the season and just on the heels of that performance last week? Uh, you know, it's – I don't know if it's big picture – time for us we're, we're breaking down a bunch of video on the Sun Devils haven't you know faced them all year and 15 games into conference it's unusual that we haven't seen them so uh, you know they're I think they're a really solid team uh, significantly better than their record in my opinion they've lost some close games and have a bunch of talent at all kinds of all kinds of positions guys that have been there um, so uh, that's the big focus for us is just trying to get through the the very next game and then we'll you know big picture stuff is probably more for maybe when the conference season is over before we head into Vegas and maybe you know uh, try to sort out exactly where we are and, and where we move forward but you know we we still broke down some film played some zone this last weekend did some different things in our pick and roll coverage that we need to improve upon in practice today uh, continue to talk about rebounding. Defense and rebounding have been uh, our focus the last two weeks and will continue to be the focus this week. And, um, you know, not much has changed, Dirk, in terms of, you know, putting our priorities in place. And, and uh, the fact that we'll, we're at home sleeping in our own bed certainly uh, more pleasant to think about than having to get on a, on a, you know, a bus or an airplane or anything like that. So hopefully, um, you know, we'll be ready to close it out. Coach, with such a uh, unusual time frame here, 7 o'clock Thursday, noon on Saturday, not a lot of time to prepare for the Wildcats. Are you doing much this week to prepare for Arizona, even though you want your team solely focused on Arizona State? And I guess the second part is, how do you get them not looking ahead to Arizona? Because that's the, you know, looks like the game of the year. Well, uh, it, it's pretty simple. I think if we focus on the staples, you know, which again is defense and rebounding, those two things we have to bring for both opponents. We're not going to be talking too much about Arizona uh, this week, scouting report wise, but a lot of what Arizona State and Arizona do are similar. Um, you know, physical teams, athletic teams, uh, solid defensively and, and some similar things in pick and roll defense that we're going to have to be ready for. Um, you know, so that's the main thing is, is we're, it's, it's not like there's two completely different opponents, uh, on the weekend. So I think we can kill a few birds with one stone and be working on some things. And, and we're not going to be talking too much about the wildcats until Friday. We do have the off day and then the morning of, of Saturday morning. So it's a, it's the first for us in terms of having a little less time. Um, but I think our guys understand that we're going to stay very much in the in the concept about it you know it being our next opponent and uh, we'll have adequate time hopefully to talk about the Wildcats we can't change it I uh, would like a little bit more time they play Wednesday night in Colorado and uh, so they'll have a little bit more time but um, first things first I guess at the beginning of the year we talked a lot about uh, the perimeter shooting and, and what was going on there maybe it was lacking a little bit what in your view has kind of come around about that it, it, is it just shooters hitting shots, or is there something that guys have tweaked their game a little bit to allow those shots to get off and, or be more on target? Well, well, I think, uh, you know, I think some of the offensive schemes and packages have been simplified. You know, we were trying to sort out a few things there. You know, it's life after DeLon, and um, as much as you want to just say, hey, this is how we're going to play, it takes a while. You got, you know, some guys being brought into the fold. Kuz didn't play a lot of minutes. Lorenzo, obviously, from a year before. So um, I, I'm hoping that part of it was figuring out what our identity was going to be and moving the basketball a little bit. And, uh, you know, guys getting familiar with playing with each other in a different type of system that didn't have uh, DeLon handling the ball a lot. So, um it's a little bit more of a challenge, I think, than people think. Just because you have four starters back doesn't mean you're just going to pick up where you left off. And, and I think some of that was the learning curve, trying to sort out what our identity was going to be. And, um, you know, I, I think guys are moving the ball. We're sharing it and um, willing to make an extra pass maybe early on. 
I don't know if that was the case. It, it might have been more about guys, and, and not on a conscious level, but subconsciously thinking that this was going to be pretty easy. And yeah, we didn't always take the best shots early in the season. And some of those shooting percentages, I think, were the result of that. And, and so we've talked about making sure that we're sharing it and not forcing bad shots. And I think guys, when they get a better look, are going to shoot a better percentage. And, and that leads for more production out of our team. Another big week for Jakob. Um, can you talk about what's clicking for him? And is he playing a little bit more controlled than earlier? It just seems like that last game, when the double key team came, he was really patient, made the right pass. Seemed like he always made the right decision. And I don't know if he's doing that better now or. Um, well, he's he improved. Playing? He's improved with that. There's no doubt about it. It's part of his post game, you know, development. Um, there's there's different ways to view it. Sometimes teams are going to come and double. Uh, on air time when the ball's in the air and some teams come and double when he dribbles and so you know that's we've thrown a number of curve balls at him in a practice setting so he gets more adept at you know what it, what it is and what's coming um, so if a team's going to come on the dribble maybe he needs to make a quicker move you know and 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 put his individual defender in a bad situation where they don't have time to get there with the double team if they're coming right away, um, you know, it's probably important to assess the situation, where are they coming from, who's open, and get the other guys in position so he can make a quick pass, and then hopefully it results in a good shot. So um, other teams aren't coming. You know, they're just banging him one-to-one. -one. Uh, some of the bigger teams in our leagues have, have played him straight up, and, and that's important for him to understand that he's got to be under control and and put him put his man in a position that's that's difficult to defend as well. I do think he's slowing down. Um, he's drawing a lot of fouls. He's second in the conference in uh, drawing fouls next to Andrew Andrews from Washington. So I, I think subconsciously he knows it's okay if he gets fouled because his free throws established now, and he feels better about that. Um, so I, I think it's a progression, a little maturity. Um, having some reps and, you know, it's got to continue. It's not like we've arrived, he's arrived. It, uh, expect some different curveballs for the remainder of the season, throwing him off balance, and, and that's important that we're all ready to deal with some of those changes.